Hi, my name is Christine Ruana. I'm a product manager on the Visual Studio setup team. Today I'm going to talk about our recommended approaches for deploying Visual Studio in common enterprise environments so you can stay secure. Enterprises have environments that make it really challenging to deploy software in. For example, administrators need to configure or they need to support centralized policy decisions while scaling out the actual installation and software configuration to a bunch of machines. Some enterprises enforce constraints on things like user permissions, machine connectivity, software versions, or even user authentication methods. In my talk today about deploying Visual Studio, I'll talk about how to use standard Microsoft administrator tools and systems because then you can easily leverage the knowledge and process that you've built up. I'll talk about deploying in restricted environments, like when users or machines have limited access. Lastly, I'll discuss various methods for tightly controlling the Visual Studio product that gets installed so that your team can confidently acquire a predetermined set of features. Some of what I talk about uh, has been around for a while, so you may already be familiar with it, but some of this stuff is relatively new. Each of the strategies I'll talk about has been, uh, each of the strategies I'll discuss works in specific scenarios, but there are admittedly some known limitations. You may or may not be able to adopt all of these approaches depending on how your organization's environment is set up and what your needs are. We do continue to evolve Visual Studio deployment technology based on feedback, and we want to partner with you to overcome any challenges you may have. Now let's talk about configuration at scale. Visual Studio has a variety of configuration scopes. There's per user, per installation instance, per machine. The last one, machine-wide configuration, is also referred to as global policies. They're typically stored in the registry, and they're typically controlled by an administrator. About a year ago, we consolidated all of the Visual Studio global policies together, and we made them available for administrators to easily discover and deploy using common IT administration tools. For example, you can now find all of the Visual Studio global policies in Intune settings catalog, so this means that an administrator can use Intune's configuration profiles to deploy these policies to their cloud-connected devices. We also provide the global policies in an ADMX file that the admin can download and use with legacy configuration tools like Group Policy Editor, usually in domain-joined environments. I'm raising your awareness to these policies because some of them, especially uh, the ones that I show here, they affect Visual Studio deployment security behaviors. Now, a fundamental security best practice is to keep your software updated regularly so that it has all the latest security fixes. For Visual Studio, we highly recommend that you take advantage of our administrator update solution which was intentionally designed to piggyback on the Windows Update solution. So all the work you've done to enable, uh, to keep Windows updated and secure can easily be extended to include Visual Studio. All an administrator has to do to enable this solution is to configure a few Visual Studio and Windows Update policies on the client machines. The only Windows update policy that you need to enable is the one to enable updates for other Microsoft products, which is turned on by default if you're getting Windows updates. And you also need to ensure that the client machine's system account has access to the Visual Studio product sources, sources that are either on the internet or on a private layout that you control. Basically, how it works is that we release our security up updates monthly on Patch Tuesdays to the Microsoft Update servers, 
where it is then picked up by IT administration tools like Intune or SCCM. Then the Windows Update Agent on the client machine, it runs as system admin, it wakes up periodically, um, maybe a couple times a day, and it checks the Microsoft Update servers to see if an update is available. If an update is found, then the client will download the product bits and silently apply the update in the background. If the update fails to install for some reason, then the Windows Update Agent will just wake up again at the next periodic update check and try again. We use a solution internally with, within Microsoft to deploy monthly Visual Studio security updates, and it works wonderfully. Now, the next solution I'm going to talk about is when your users don't have administration permissions on their machine. A lot of organizations follow security best practice to restrict user permissions to the least privileged access necessary, which is typically called standard user. Most Visual Studio functionality is available to standard users, except for the installer functionality. The Visual Studio uh, installer requires administrator permissions to use because some of the files that it installs goes into protected areas of Windows. That's why your standard users uh, don't, they can't use the installer. So when developers can't use the installer, sometimes they get frustrated because they can't you know, install or update the components they need to do their job. This frustration then gets passed on to the administrator because the administ and now the administrator gets the extra work of figuring out how to install uh, more stuff on other people's machines. So to relieve these pain points, we now provide a relatively easy way for administrators to intentionally and effectively delegate control of installer functionality to standard users. To enable this on the client machine, the admin needs to install just the installer. They need to configure a new standard user policy. And again, they need to ensure that the system account has access to the product sources. Once the client machine has been properly set up, then the burden of responsibility for picking and choosing which Visual Studio components to install or update can transition from the administrator back to the developer. Now, sometimes you need to install Visual Studio on machines that don't have access to the internet, which is a default location where Visual Studio tries to acquire the product bits from. A lot of banks are in this situation. The deployment solution here is to use a layout, which is basically your own private cache of Visual Studio files. Now, to enable the layout solution, the admin needs to download the product create the layout and host it somewhere where the client machines can see it. Historically, uh, layouts have been made available on network shares, but we recently enabled them to be accessible through HTTP as well. It's helpful if the admin does the initial install of the layout onto the client machine. And the admin needs to have a plan for keeping both the layout and the clients updated on a monthly uh, regular cadence. We recommend monthly. Now, a few additional points about layouts that I want to raise your awareness to is, uh, most importantly, the layouts need to contain all of the product bits that the client may ever want to install, which means that the layouts could get kind of large. Uh, we don't want to get into a situation where the client tries to install something that's not in the layout. You can use the no web parameter to force the installer not to even look at the internet to acquire the product bits, like even as a backup. And lastly, keep in mind that layouts have been around for a long time. The technology was originally developed when domain joined environments was the norm. And we continue to evolve layouts, like making them internet except intranet or internet accessible, like I mentioned previously. Now, the last topic I'm going to touch on today is when organizations want to tightly control and standardize on the Visual Studio functionality that gets installed within their organization. We have a lot of solutions for how to do this. 
You can programmatically control client installations and specify exactly which components to install or which version to install. Uh, you can create a layout of specific components and limit your client's visibility to that layout. That's what I just talked about. You can use our long-term servicing baseline channels to stay at a particular feature set level while still receiving security updates. You can uh, use VS config files to specify the components that need to be installed. You can pass these VS config files around through team projects. You can use them to initialize a layout. You can install them through the installer. And I'm really happy to announce, too, that with 17.9, which is coming out very soon, we're going to allow the ability to specify extensions in these VS config files. You can also customize the installer's available tab and, for example, make a private layout available and to show, make a private layout available to install, or you could suppress products from being installed like the previews. And I also want to make sure that you are aware of our relatively new Remove Out of Support Components policy that when enabled during updates, it removes any components that have transitioned to out of support state and are thus vulnerable. So it helps keep you secure. So this concludes my talk, and if I can leave you with one message, it's that we strongly encourage you to evaluate and adopt the Visual Studio Administrator update solution, if at all possible. It is by far the easiest way to keep your organization updated and secure. There's online documentation available at these links that I'm showing here. And we always welcome feedback for where to make improvements. If you have any challenges deploying Visual Studio, we'd love to hear about them, and we'd love to partner with you to make your deployment experience better. Thank you very much.